Let's talk about selling on eBay in 2024 and here at the tail end of 2023, specifically reselling used items on eBay. Ebay. My name is Jake Ryder. I go by JRide Flips here on social media and I've been selling on eBay for a while. I truly believe this is a platform where you can make a nice forty to sixty thousand dollars per year part time and easily make over a hundred thousand dollars a year full time if you follow the practices set out in this video and are continuously learning every single day. Last year was my first year selling on eBay and I did $125,000 in revenue on about a 60% margin. This year, halfway through October, I'm at about $185,000 in revenue, looking to push that to $250,000. This year, I'm operating at about a 55% margin. Now that's just the revenue from eBay. I also have a ton of different deals where I do wholesaling and I also have local deals with sports shops and different things here in town, but we're just specifically focusing on eBay in this video here today. I think there are six major steps that you need to do Monday through Friday. And I also recommend doing a few of these steps on Saturday and then completely taking Sunday off for your mental health and for your family. Those six steps that you will be doing each day are first, sourcing, actually finding the items that you will be listing on eBay. Number two is prepping those items, washing them, cleaning them, seeing what kind of condition they are for reselling. The third is listing them onto eBay. The fourth is inventorying them, putting them in a space that you will be able to find them later. The fifth is shipping them off. And the sixth is customer service, answering questions, combining orders, dealing with returns all of that good stuff. Then of course there will be a ton of other smaller steps and things you need to be doing each day outside of those six, which I will be highlighting in this video. So let's go ahead and dive right into all of them. The first thing that I wanna talk about in this video is the most important part of this eBay process and that is sourcing. There are three components to sourcing that you need to focus on to have a profitable business. That is how often can you find items at what price can you buy them so they are profitable and how quickly do those items move the best way to scale any business especially this one is to master those three things i need to find more items i need to find them at the cheapest price possible with the biggest margin possible and i need to find items that sell as fast as possible as you continue to do this, you're going to expand your business and make more and more and more money. So some of the basic ways of sourcing to find product for eBay are going to thrift stores. I definitely recommend this one. Garage and yard sales, estate sales, and then also retail arbitrage, going to Walmart, Costco, Dollar Tree, Lowe's, Home Depot, buying things that are on clearance selling them for a profit on eBay. You want to really focus in and harness the power of these basic foundational sourcing. I have other videos on the channel about advanced sourcing tips, but you really want to establish, and it, it all depends on your area, but for most people, thrifting, garage sales, and estate sales are going to be your main way of finding, of finding items to flip on eBay. You can also throw in flea markets and retail arbitrage and things like that. So those are the places that you are going to go to source, which is very important, but much more important is finding the correct items. Yes, if you want to find gold, you have to go where gold is, okay? So it's important where you are sourcing, but what's much more important is what you are sourcing. So a lot of people think basketball cards are worth money and they sell well on eBay. That is very correct and very incorrect at the same time. Do basketball cards sell on eBay? Yes, but it has to be the right basketball card. Um, I got plenty of examples right here. I love sports cards. I sell a ton of them, but a lot of them are worthless. 90s cards that were overproduced are worthless, okay? If you come across, <laughs> no shade on Kelly Olenek. I love basketball, so I know who Kelly Olenek is, but the majority of you, I do not think know who Kelly Olenek is. This card is worth pennies, not worth anything, okay? Now, if you find a Kobe Bryant rookie card, PSA 10, you've got a small fortune on your hands. But if you find a basic base optic DeJounte Murray, 
again, it's worth pennies. So you have to know what to look for and then you have to know how to look it up once you find it. So you need to actually look up your items that you're finding. For example, this morning, we found a Guitar Hero guitar, okay? If you search on eBay, Guitar Hero guitar, you're gonna see tens of thousands listed and you're not gonna see too many, you're not gonna see as many sold because there are a lot of Guitar Hero guitars out there that are worth buying and there are a lot of them that are worth passing on. So I'm gonna hop into my computer and show you guys how to actually look things up. But especially with electronics, it's easy because you'll be able to find model numbers. So I don't even, I don't type into eBay Guitar Hero Guitar. I don't even type into eBay Guitar Hero Guitar We Red. What I do is I type in 95911.805. That's gonna show me how many are listed and how many are sold and what they're actually selling for. So let me show you guys how to look up items, how to know what their sell-through rate is and how to actually buy profitable items to flip on eBay. But before I get into that, I used a phrase that you may have not heard of, which is sell-through rate. Here on YouTube, there's a lot of controversy around everything. That's just human nature and that's just how things are set up, okay? So as you grow in this community, you're gonna, you're gonna hear that some people have differing opinions on what sell-through rate is. You can use my definition if you'd like to. This is what I use. It's very simple. Um, how I calculate sell-through rate is, let's, let's take another example right here. This Go Video DVD VCR combo player remote. It's the 00002N. If I were to search this and there are 100 listed and then I filter to sold and there were 100 sold, that would be a 100% sell-through rate. If I searched this and 10 of them were listed and 18 of them were sold, it would be a 180% 90-day sell-through rate. If I searched and there were 1,000 listed but only 200 sold, that would be a 20% 90-day sell-through rate. All right, guys, so we're here on eBay. As you can see, I'm sharing my screen here. I'm gonna show you guys how to look up items and how to calculate their sell-through rate. So. Let's go ahead and use our example from earlier. We have a Guitar Hero guitar, okay? When we search that, we're gonna see there are 12,000 results. We're gonna scroll down on the left side navigation and we are going to go to sold listings, okay? So we have sold here. There were 12,000 listed and there are 11,000 sold, which is great. That's like a 90% sell through rate. 92%, 93%, that's an awesome sell-through rate, right? Now, the correct way to actually look things up, in my opinion, is to look up the individual model number. That's gonna give us much more accurate data to see how many are selling, what they're actually selling for. Because look, here we have a Guitar Hero that sold for $40 with the game, then by itself 40, then 30, then two of them for 100, then one of them for 80, two of them for 100, another one for 35, another one by itself for 75, 90. Pretty, pretty within a nice margin, but, but a little scattered, right? But if we type in the actual model number of this model, which is 95911-805, type that in, we have 207 sold, and 74 listed, okay? So this was a great buy because there's only 74 listed, but over two, just over, we'll say just 200, 207 sales. So that is about a 225% sell through rate. If you could pick up 10, 225% sell through rate items every single day of your life, you'll make a million dollars a year. Pretty close. I think you'd have to do Okay, scratch that. You have to make $2,700 a day to make a million dollars a year. But if you are only picking up 100% plus sell-through rate items, you're gonna live an awesome life here on eBay and we're gonna talk about that a little bit later on in the video, okay? Now let's do another example while we're here. So a lot of people will sell 
shoes and shirts and things like that. It gets a bit harder to look up shirts and things of that nature. For example, I'm wearing a Travis Matthews shirt. The way I looked this one up would just be a Travis Matthews large white shirt, and then you would have to look at the data and make, make some conclusions from that. I'll do some examples of that as well. But here, with the Hoka's, so like I said, with shoes and shirts and pants and things of that nature, it's gonna be a bit harder because they don't always have exact model numbers. Luckily for us here, we have some Hoka's here that do have an exact model number. Uh, so we'll go ahead and search here again. We're gonna search Hoka, and then this is the 1106517s. We're gonna search that. We're gonna see that 10 have sold, okay? So we have 10 cells and then listed we have four. So again, we have an extremely fast sell through right here. This is another 225% sell through, okay? But then you also have to look at the size and see if you have a good size. So if I have a men's 4.5, even though this is a 225% sell through rate, these puppies are gonna sit a really, really, really long time until the right shoe size comes along. If this is a size 22, I'm really hoping that Shaq needs a pair of Hoka's on eBay. So one more quick example here. Let's take a look at this shirt, for example. This is an Orvis shirt. It's a blue short sleeve and it's XL. So let's do a quick research on what this sells for and how quickly it sells. Okay, so when we're researching clothing, all I'm simply gonna do here for this one is put Orvis shirt and then the size XL, if I can type that correctly. And then we're gonna throw mins in there as well. So we're seeing that there are 5,200 listed. A bunch of different colors and variations. That's fine for now. We're gonna scroll down here to sold and see how many of the 5,200 are, are sold. 2,200 in the last 90 days. So now we're looking at about a 40% sell-through rate item here. Orvis was selling much quicker a year ago, two years ago, especially three, four years ago. They were just recently picked up by Costco. So now they have more shirts available in the market for an even better price. So they have slowed down considerably. I don't pick up a lot of Orvis anymore. I still definitely pick up their fishing jackets and heavier stuff. But when it comes to shirts, especially if it's above $6, easy pass for me nowadays. So now looking at this, we're seeing that there are 2,200 XL shirts that have sold. Now just to make it even better, I'm going to type in short sleeve. And we're going to see that 1,000 have sold, which, don't get me wrong, that's great. That means over 30 XL Orvis shirts have sold on eBay each day for the last 90 days on average. So that's a pretty, that's a pretty good indicator that they do sell, but there are, there is much more supply than there is demand because there are almost 3,000 XL short sleeve Orvis shirts and only 1,000 have sold. Um, there's a couple of things that come into play when you're factoring clothing, but the simplest way to look something up is to just do Orvis XL shirt, read the data from that. Tommy Bahama large shirt, do some cross data from that. There's And there's just a much more nuance that you're going to get into, like the sleeve length matters, the size matters, the color matters, the print matters, the buttons matter. All of these things matter, but these are things you're going to need to learn as you continue on in your journey in reselling. But you want to pick up things that sell well and sell fast, and you have to do that research to get there. Especially as a beginner, and continue to do this throughout your reselling career. I still do this every single day. Look things up on eBay in the thrift store and at garage sales. It's not a big deal. No one's gonna actually question what you're doing. It happens every once in a while, but not very often at all. And you're not dumb for looking things up. You're not losing tons of money to your competition looking things up for 32 seconds, you're fine. Go to the eBay app on your phone and look up things that you find. You wanna look up, if you find this, Okay, look it up on eBay. Go to the app and type in Polynex Power Massager High Intensity Massager or just look up 
polynex wm-20. You're gonna search that in your phone on the app. Then you're going to go right here and you're going to click on filter. You're gonna scroll down and you're going to go to sold. And you're gonna see how many are listed and how many are sold. If it's not a good sell through rate or if it's not selling for an, a margin, if it's not selling for a number that is profitable, leave it behind. Don't buy something just because it's the right brand. Because sometimes you can still even get burned on that, like we saw with the Guitar Hero guitars. There's a few of them that, even though they're a Guitar Hero guitar, they have a really, really slow sell-through rate because it's not the right model or for the right console. Look everything up. Take your time, especially in the beginning. Learn as much as you can. Do this in the thrift store. And then I have some videos that teach you how to do this outside of the thrift store in your free time. But continuously keep looking things up every single day. Let me say that again. Continuously look up things on your phone in the stores every single day. I still do this every single day and I'm glad that I do. All right, so now you guys know how to research and how to find profitable items. Now I want to talk about how many items you guys should be looking for. I'm not part of the military, but I have a lot of friends and families who are, and there's a saying in the military called slow is smooth and smooth is fast. A lot of times when we start a side hustle or a new business, we want to make $10,000 as quick as possible. And then we want to scale that to a hundred thousand and then to a million and then to billions as fast as possible, right? Unfortunately, most businesses don't work like that. There are some exceptions, but you want to go smooth because smooth is fast. It's really hard at the beginning to own, to grow slow but I definitely recommend a few tips. The first one is to buy your items piece by piece. What does that mean? That means stay away from bulk orders and from pallets. I know it's a very popular thing to do and it gets a ton and a ton of views on YouTube because it is very entertaining, but it is not very value driven. Now, don't attack me. This is, this is my own opinions and you gotta run your business the way you would like to, but a lot of times when you buy pallets, you spend $700, you put in 42 hours worth of work, and you make revenue $950. After all the fees and expenses, you're left with $54. And then if you have one or two returns, you just worked for free. You learned a lot. You learned you should never buy another pallet again. But a lot of times we want to go fast. And the fastest way to build an inventory is to buy a wholesale lot or to buy pallets. I do recommend this further down the road when you have more knowledge and experience under your belt, but especially when you're starting. And I think in the long haul, continuing to buy piece by piece. What does that mean? It means you go to a thrift store and you buy seven items for around $5 each. You've spent $35 on things that you know have a fast sell through rate that will turn over within the next 10 days to 100 days, you'll get your money back and then you can go spend it on more profitable inventory and keep rinsing and repeating. But a lot of people run into the problem of overbuying, overlisting, and then having a huge store. I, I've, I've heard of people that have 3,000 item stores that sell 0.5 items per day. That means on Monday they get a sale, on Tuesday they don't, on Wednesday they get one, on Thursday they don't. On Friday they get two, and on Saturday and Sunday they get zero. Tough business to be in. But if you are getting, if you're listing eight items a day and they're all 225% sell through rate items like those Hoka's and those Guitar Heroes, hard to do. But if you're listing seven of those, that means you're selling 10 a day and you're making a ton of money, okay? So go slow. At the beginning, you're gonna make a ton of mistakes as well because Man, I could honestly make this video like three or four hours, so I need to really do some editing and really, really be concise. But you can, there's cycles and there's seasonality and things. Like there's there's DVDs that were selling for $40 during the pandemic that are only selling for $8 today. And so you may see the data of it selling for $40, but it's just not selling for that anymore. And so when you go and you take a look at your store after it's been listed for a year, you're like, oh, I need to drop this down. There's a lot of times where, especially in the beginning, you're gonna buy things 
and you're not going to sell them because you thought that they would go for more money than they did and also because you listed them incorrectly or priced them incorrectly which is something we're going to dive into as well but i definitely recommend piece by piece and buying items with a sell-through rate that is very fast now this doesn't mean that you can only you should only buy items that have a hundred percent sell-through rate or that sell within 15 days or so i personally believe that a 0.5 percent sell-through rate is enough to cash flow and to keep a business going during the growth phase so if you have 1,000 items in your store and you're selling five per day that's an okay place to be at if you are still growing which would mean if you come across an item that has 100 listed but only 50 sold in the last 90 days that's okay it's not ideal but you don't have to only be looking for these things that have more than a hundred percent sell-through rate it's perfectly fine picking some things up that have a 50% sell-through rate. It's even okay to pick up some things that have a 35 to 40% sell-through rate. That's where things get a little bit iffy, but when you're buying the 225% sell-through rate items, it's gonna average out. I think you definitely want to be at a place where you're selling one item for every 100 items you have. So if you have 1,000 in a store, you're selling 10 or more if possible. But if you're only at a 0.5% sell-through rate, you're still cash flowing and you're building, which is okay. But you wanna to get to a point where you're eventually selling one for every 100 items you have, or you're eventually getting to a point where you're listing 10 and selling 10, listing 15, selling 15, listing 20, selling 20. Once you source items at thrift stores, garage sales, estate sales, as you can see, a lot of these items I have gotten from thrift stores because they have these stickers on them. You'll need to clean them and test them. These I got from garage sales because they don't have stickers on them. So every day I come home from thrift stores and on the weekends I come home from garage sales and I put all of my items that need to be processed right here. On this table right here, they get cleaned and they get tested. And then when they are cleaned and tested, they move to this bucket for me to take to my listing station to list them, which we will get into as well. Now, I've been talking about this throughout the video and I'll continue to do so. I don't think you need to invest a ton of money into your eBay business. I think capital is required for the average business. Starting a pest control company, you need a little bit of cash. Starting a tech company, you need investors and you need a ton and a ton of capital. Your eBay business, you don't need any of that. You just need, you can start selling things around your house or you can go to a thrift store with $30 and you can start your business. When it comes to cleaning my items, 95% of them are cleaned with LA's Totally Awesome from Dollar Tree. This is a $1.25. As you guys can see right here, I've got like eight more on deck. This is all you need to clean, 95% of your items. And then I just have random rags or hand towels whatever you guys call them in your part of the country and in your part of the world i call them rags then every once in a while you're gonna need the pink stuff i use this on some toys and stuff that have like really hard things to get off of but i only use that on less than five out of a hundred items then every once in a while if you get into if you get into pans and pots and things like that you may need some barkeepers friend and things like that but really you don't need to invest a ton of money into cleaning materials just get the dollar 25 stuff and then when it comes to testing this is where continuous learning is going to come into play um, i have watched hundreds of hours of youtube videos on how to test um, digital cameras car stereos DVD, VCR, combo players, Guitar Hero guitars. This is just something that you're gonna learn 39 seconds at a time on YouTube, just making simple searches. And then you're just gonna continue to learn and learn and learn on YouTube how to test these items. Some of them are not going to work. Most of them actually will. You'll be surprised, at least in my experience, how many items actually work from thrift stores and garage sales. But if the item is nice enough, they even sell for parts, which is something that I'll get into um, during the video as well. When it comes to listing, you're gonna want what's called a photo station. It doesn't have to be anything super fancy, especially when you're starting out. I have seen people make 
thousands of dollars a month just listing things on their kitchen counters with bananas in the corner and cookie crumbs in the same photo. But you definitely want to level up as you go and especially if you have the capital at the beginning, you wanna invest a little bit of money into a photo setup. Um, I think these lights were $30 each on Amazon and then these are sticky tiles that you can also get on Amazon or Home Depot that I think I got for 40 bucks. I recommend a neutral or gray background. This is another one of those controversial topics here on YouTube because there is literature supporting the fact that if you have a white background, it improves your Google ranking. But especially when it comes to used items, you want to give an accurate representation on the item they're actually getting. A lot of times if you use a white background on a used item, people believe that it is a new item. Even though you have it listed as used, you put that in the title that it's used and you put it in the description that it's used. A lot of people just look at the photo and buy the first thing they see. So I would definitely use a neutral background because it gives a better representation of the condition of the item and the condition of items are very important when it comes to eBay because a lot of the items that you will be selling are used. So there's multiple ways to actually do your listings. A lot of people recommend on the desktop, um, on your phone, there's a ton of different ways. I just recommend doing it on your phone. It's the simplest and fastest way to do things. And it's actually a very simple process. So I'm gonna show you guys right here live how to actually do a listing on eBay. Quick disclaimer, not all Roku remotes are created equally. A lot of these are gonna go for $4 free shipping. But what I do, is I open up my phone, I go into the eBay app, and then I'm going to search. So this is a Roku remote with the RC35 as the model number. So we're gonna search Roku RC35. We're going to see that currently only one is listed and it's broken. And when we go to sold, we're going to see 11 have sold. So this has an extremely fast sell through rate. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that even slower for those of you that this may be your first listing ever. So you're gonna search Roku, then you're gonna search the model number, and you're going to see that there's only one listed, and then it's giving you other results. You're gonna completely ignore these because these are different Roku remotes. Like I said, they only sell for $4 free shipping. Then you're gonna to go to filter, you're gonna scroll down to sold items. That's gonna show you how many have sold, which is 11, and what they're actually selling for. $14.99 free shipping, $14 plus $12 shipping, $20 plus $5 shipping, $12, $12, $14. That's enough data for me to understand that I'm going to sell it for $15 plus shipping. So I'm going to click on this one because it's sold for a reason. And then I'm going to sell one like this. It's going to automatically populate the title and all the item specifics. I just make sure quickly that all the specifics look good. You're gonna click on that blue plus button and then you're going to snap some photos. I recommend at least four photos, but I recommend getting as close to 12 when it makes sense. So there's three, four, five, six, and then a close up on the model number. Then you're gonna hit done. Those are gonna get put up. You're gonna to go to condition, used. All of the item specifics are already good. I like to clear any NAs. Then we're gonna to go to price. We're gonna wait for that to turn blue. I put 1487. There's a lot of psychological tips behind putting a seven there instead of a nine that I can talk about in another video. And then I have my shipping, I do Custom shipping, I have it at a flat rate of $4.87, which I'll be talking about in the next one. Then you can hit list your item or save for later. I put save for later because I put it in a draft bank that I launch from every morning, and I'll be talking about that in the video as well. Like I've mentioned already a few times, this is a beginner's guide. This is, I feel, the best way to get started, to just immediately start getting some of your items out there and then learning more and more as you go. There are different ways of listing items using the desktop or even using your phone. A lot of people create their own titles with uh, manually typing them out and then also filling out their own manual item specifics and then selling similar off of their own items. Um, this is just going to add to your process, especially in the beginning, it can take more time. 
I would much rather, this, what I still do today, I still use my phone and I copy other people's listings. And then if I need to make other changes then I, that are necessary, I do those. But honestly, I'm able to list 25 to 40 items an hour doing this method. If you would like to slow your process down, but increase the quality of your listing, you can do that as well. But I like to get a ton of items up as fast as possible, make any changes necessary that I need to, and just make a ton of money. Making our listing process is going to be significantly easier when we have business policies set in place. So you're going to go to your eBay account. Once you're there, you're gonna to go to my eBay. You're gonna scroll down to selling. This is going to take you to what's called your seller hub. Once you're in your seller hub, you're gonna to wanna to go to listings and then go to active. This is gonna show you how many active listings you have. I have just under 2,800 currently, and then I have 245 in my draft bank. You're gonna scroll down and on the left side here, you're gonna see business policies. You're gonna select that. Then you're gonna to go to create policy. The first policy we're gonna create is a simple one. It's just our payment policy. You can name it whatever you want. You can just name it payment policy, <laughs> okay? No additional text needed. This is, you're just going to select require immediate payment when buyer uses buy it now. That's the only one you want to do. You don't want to do cash on pickup, check or money order. That was popular 25 years ago. eBay has evolved. We're just doing everything, immediate transactions. Then you're gonna save that, okay? I already have those policies, so I'm not going to save mine. Now we're going to go back. Um, shoot, I may not be able to, okay. Then we're going to create another policy. This is going to be our return policy. We're gonna to go to return policy. Now, this is where things get controversial, but I want you guys to understand that this is the best way to do eBay, okay? And I'm going to try to convince you of that, um, but you need to run your business the best way you see fit and do what's best for you and your, your business and your family, right? So you're gonna type in here, free returns, okay? People are already getting upset with me, but let me explain, okay? You're going to accept, you're gonna hit the knob, accept free returns. You're going to do, I recommend doing 30 day free returns because it gives you top rated. We'll talk about that later. Now, this is where things get extra controversial. You can have buyer pays return shipping or free for buyer you pay. I'm going to select free for buyer you pay. What this allows us to do is allows us to become a top rated plus seller, which gives us up to 20% off of our fees. You're going to have returns in business. It sucks, it's very emotionally hard, but it's just the way that business goes. If you accept free returns, you're gonna get what's called seller protections from eBay, which means if someone buys this white shirt and then they, and you have no returns, they go to a party, they get ketchup on it, and then they do what's called forcing a return. They put item not as described. If they put item not as described, this is, is it's an unfortunate reality, then you have to accept the return. Even if you put no returns, they will force a return, and then you will have to refund them the original shipping, the shipping for it to come back, and 100% of the sales price. If you have free returns and someone tries, sorry, I got a call, and someone tries to do a fraudulent return, so this ketchup, for example, when they send you back the item, you can withhold the original shipping and you only have to refund them 50% of the purchase price. That still sucks, okay? No way around that, that still sucks, but you get those seller protections. Plus, don't feed the algorithm, feed the customer. Yes, this is going to give you an algorithmic boost because eBay wants you to do free returns because your customers want that. So if you have two items identical right next to each other, which two identical items from different sellers will be next to each other on eBay, one is free returns, the other one isn't, I'm gonna buy the one with free returns. Even though I have only returned one item in my whole life online, <laughs> I do not return items. But I have no intentions of returning items and I still buy the one with free item with free returns because 
I just know that it's going to be a better experience. And if anything does happen, I know that I'm protected. And so you're going to get more sales because of free returns. Okay. And then don't allow, um, don't accept returns on international sales. You can keep that one toggled off and then hit save here because eBay, if there's ever an international return, eBay just takes care of that. Okay. So honestly, when I get international sales, I get excited because it's guaranteed that there's going to be no returns. Um, because if there is a return, eBay sends you an email saying, Hey, your customer would like to return the item. Don't worry. You have done your work. We're going to take care of this. If we see that a refund is necessary, we will refund them out of our funds and they will not be taken out of your funds. So you want to make these two sh policies for your listings. And then I'll be going into shipping policies later on in the video. Uh, when we get to that portion of the video as well. Now let's talk about how many items we should be listing and how often. There's a lot of controversy here on YouTube around what's called the eBay algorithms. There are multiple algorithms working together to create one large algorithm. This is a true thing. Uh, the eBay is a tech company. It has algorithms that are serving buyers and sellers and populating items in a way that is most sufficient to make them the most money possible. And if we are doing things correctly, it will make us the most money possible. So I would recommend that you don't think about the algorithm as much as you think about your customer. I have plenty of videos talking about this topic, so I won't dive deep into the algorithm here, but what do my customers want? Not what does my, what does the eBay algorithm want? It's important to understand the algorithm and serve it, but it's much more important to serve your customers. Now, with that being said, I believe that it is very important to be ultra consistent on eBay. It's important to be ultra consistent in all of the things worthwhile doing on in life, especially in business. So I recommend listing the exact same amount of items every single day on eBay. The way that I do this is through what's called a draft bank. And when I mean every day, I mean 365 days a year. I list on my birthday, on my anniversary, on Christmas, on Thanksgiving. It doesn't matter what's going on. I list the exact same amount of items every single day because of what's called my draft bank. On your phone, you can have up to 250 drafts. Now, I have noticed a few glitches and things happen around the 250 draft mark. So I just keep a draft. Oh guys, I just got to sell on Poshmark. <laughs> I keep a draft bank of 245 items. Why? Because on the day that I break my leg and have to go to the hospital, I can still list my items on the day on the four day vacation that I want to take completely off and just spend with my wife and my family and my future kids. I can just completely take off because I want to stay ultra consistent and my draft bank allows me to do that. So currently I am listing 20 items a day, every single day, no matter what. The way I do that is Monday through Friday, I list 30 items a day. That's 150 items. And then Monday through Sunday, I launch 20 of them from my draft, which ends up being 140 items per week. So every week my draft bank grows by 10 or I just list a few extra ones so that way I don't get above the 250. So every Monday I draft 30 and then Tuesday I draft 30. Instead of hitting list it now, I put save for later. Then every morning when I wake up around six o'clock, I wake up between 545 and 630. I wake up, I do a little morning routine and then I open my phone or my laptop and I go to my drafts and then I launch 20 of them. And if you do them correctly, you don't have to do any editing. You just hit launch and all 20 go up and you can do this every single day at the exact same time and keep that machine churning. This is why I recommend the draft bank because the draft bank gives you two things, ultra consistency and work-life balance at the same time. A lot of times when people have work-life balance, it limits their consistency. But if you have a draft bank, you can still have ultra consistency while having work-life balance at the same time. I'm really excited for the days. I'm not excited for my kids to be sick, but I am excited for the days that I wake up, two of my kids are very sick and they can't go to school and they need me to step up a little bit more, take extra care of them. 
I can launch my, my listings. It'll take me less than six minutes, and then I am full dad mode for the rest of the day. Really excited for that. I'm excited for the days where I want to have a weekend getaway with my wife, and I can just schedule my listings to be launched, and I can spend four days completely connecting with my wife and not have to worry about business at all because I have a draft bank to launch my listings, and I'm to the point where I have employees, which I will talk about in, in other videos, how to get employees and things like that. But this is the ultimate beginner's guide for how to launch, for how to run an eBay business. Now let's talk about how many items you should list. When you're first beginning this as a side hustle, I definitely recommend only buying things with 100% sell through rate or faster. It can be a little faster, it can be a little slower than that as well. But at the beginning, you definitely want to turn $1 into 15 as fast as you can over and over and over again or $2 into 26, or $4 into 35, over and over and over and over again as fast as you can. So I would recommend only starting out with, I, I would go, this is what I would actually do, I just thought of this. I would go thrifting every day for a week and see how many items you can get. Now this isn't enough data to cover the spread. It isn't enough data to make a, a huge business decision, but it's gonna give you a good amount of information on how many items you can actually get realistically in your area, just giving the minimal effort of going to thrift stores. So if you go on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and you walk away with six items a day, every day, or two here, 15 there, three there, seven there, seven there, nine there, you can assume that you can get six every single day. So what I would do is I would list three every single day, three. What I would do is Monday through Friday, I would draft all six of those items into my draft bank. And so that way, when you start your business that next Monday, you already have 36 items in your draft bank. You already have 10 and a half days of listings and you launch three. And then you launch three forever until you start listing, until you start selling two every single day. If you're doing this right, I mean, if you have video games and iPhones, you're gonna be able to start jumping your listings after a week. But if you're doing a traditional kind of everything seller, picking up stuff, just learning and learning and stuff, you're probably gonna start selling two every day around a, between 150 and 300 listings. Then once you're listing two, then once you're selling two or three every day, I would hop to five. And I would keep doing five every single day. Drafting 10, launching five. Drafting 10, launching five. Drafting 10, launching five. Until you are getting four or five sales every single day. On average, you know, sometimes on Monday you're gonna get one and then on Tuesday you're gonna get nine and then four and then six. Okay, it's never consistent. If you are looking for consistent results, don't be an entrepreneur, don't have side hustles. Consistent effort does not always equal consistent results and you have to understand that and accept that if you're going to be a successful business owner. So once you're averaging five per day, so once you're getting 35-ish every single week, now you can move to eight and then just keep doing that until, and then you can go to 10 and then 15 and then 20 and then 25, however big you would like to scale your business. But again, going back to smooth is fast. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. If you go slow and you just do one a day or two a day or three a day and then just keep building and building and building, I promise you, you will grow faster than if you just put up 37 items that have a slow sell through rate because they were all 50 cents or free or $2. Buy quality items and list enough of them in a consistent way and you will grow faster than just buying whatever you can find, listing whatever you can find and having a 3,000 item store that sells half an item a day. All right, let's move on to shipping. It's the topic where beginners have the most questions usually and it's an intimidating topic when it comes to eBay reselling. It's what stops a lot of people from doing eBay and online sales as well, because it is very confusing. So let's go ahead and hop back into my computer here. Just a reminder, this is a beginner's guide. There are 
better ways to ship. Not completely better, but there are slightly better ways to ship some advanced methods, things like that that can save you more money overall, which you should learn over time by doing more research on my channel and other channels here on YouTube. But I'm gonna show you the two business policies that you really only need to get started. And these are the two policies that you're gonna use the most in your business. After you've been doing this for a while, you can start to do what's called flat rate shipping, but I would definitely hold off on that for a minute until you learn through experience of selling hundreds or even thousands of items, how much things weigh and how much they typically are to ship to certain locations. So you're gonna go to your create your business policies and your active listings, and then you're gonna create a shipping policy. The first one we're gonna make here, we are going to call calculated, man, if I can, <laughs> That was embarrassing. Calculated ground, we're gonna call it calculated USPS ground. Okay, you're going to put calculated costs vary. This is going to bring up a drop down menu and then we're going to select USPS ground advantage. Okay, and then that's it. The policy description you can add if you'd like to, uh, just calculated by weight, you don't need to. Okay. Then you're going to select your handling time. In order to be top rated plus, you need a one day business handling time or sooner. So you need to select same day or one business day. For beginners, and I still do this to this day because my post office isn't the greatest, I do a two business day shipping time, but I ship things the next day anyway. So that's what I recommend doing to maintain optimal health on your account. Sorry, bad angle. Especially if you don't have the greatest postal service like I do in my town. Do two day business shipping, but ship as often and as quickly as you can. Now, when you list this massager, I know it's kind of weird that people buy used massagers online. So I have here on my screen how we're going to create, set this listing. So I already showed you guys how to create a listing. And now that we have these policies, um, we already have the price and everything. Um, and now we're going to do, sorry, I said um a thousand times, calculated USPS ground. Then you're gonna put in the exact measurements of the item. So that was, it was three pounds. It was actually like two pounds and eight ounces. Just always round up to the nearest pound. If it's over one pound, round up to the nearest pound. And then if it's under one pound, round up to the nearest ounce. Always go up though, don't round down, always round up. So if something is one pound, eight ounces, you just put two pounds. Um, if something is 6.8 ounces, it's, it's seven ounces. Or you can even round it up to eight, but that's a little more advanced strategy. But just round, always round up to the nearest whole number, okay? So two pound, three pounds, then you're gonna put in the exact dimensions and then it's going to calculate, depending on where the person lives that buy your item, how much they're gonna pay for shipping. And with USPS ground advantage, it is reasonable. So as long as you price your item cor correctly, then it's going to be um, a good outcome and, and people will buy your items. Then because you have already created policies, your payment policy, it will just automatically put that in for you. And then you already have your return policy, so that's automatically gonna put that in for you. So when you're listing, all you're going to do, we've already discussed this, is, is, what, is what I did on my phone. It'll auto-generate all that stuff for you, and then you're good to go, and then you can uh, save it for later. All right, the next shipping policy that I recommend having, again, this is the beginner video. You're just gonna use these two shipping methods. Create policy, go to shipping, and then you're going to make this flat rate envelope, okay? Then you're going to go to flat and you're gonna select the service of USPS priority flat rate envelope, okay? Those look like this. Oh, I have them moved down here. They look like this. Anything that is over one pound that will fit in here, I use these for jackets uh, that weigh over a pound and just other items. If it weighs over a pound and it fits in this, use this. Everything else, just use USPS Ground Advantage. 
okay? Then just keep shipping things out using these two methods. Keep watching YouTube videos. I have a few. A ton of other YouTubers have other videos about how to do more advanced methods of shipping on eBay. But I promise just these two shipping methods, big or small items, it's gonna be great for you. So anything over a pound that fits in that, put in there. Everything else, USPS, ground advantage, put in how long the measurements are, how much the item weighs, whether it's 4.2 ounces, five ounces, if it's 17 pounds, because you're shipping off maybe a subwoofer, then you put, um, then for that I would put 20 pounds. I would just round up because you're gonna add a box and some shipping materials as well. Put the exact measurements of the box that it's gonna go in, plus, um, 20 pounds and then it'll calculate that for your customer and then you'll ship it that way. But just with these two USPS flat rate envelope, same cost to all buyers, select USPS priority mail, select your handling time, uh, two days, one days, same business day. If you're super, super part time and you can only ship out, you know, three, two, two times a day, I mean two times a week, some people do three day handling time, whatever it is. Okay, and then these are the two shipping policies that you guys will use most, that you will only use as a beginner, and then you can add on top of your knowledge from there as well, through my other videos or other YouTubers' videos. Materials for shipping. So, go to your post office and grab some of these flat rate envelopes. They are free, um, just depending on your local USPS. Sometimes I don't want you taking more than like two or three at a time. Sometimes I don't like you taking more than 10. Just whatever, whatever works in your local town. My town doesn't care. I usually grab 50 to 100 of them every time I go. Here's where a lot of people disagree with me. Um, when it comes to boxes, I get them for free out of the dumpster. Especially when I ship golf clubs and baseball bats, I just go to a used golf store and I get those golf boxes out of the dumpster. And then for everything else that I ship, I just go to... Kroger, it's called Smith's in Utah, or Dollar Tree, and they usually have a separate dumpster for cardboard only, and you can get completely dry cardboard boxes. I get all of them out of the dumpster. If that's not right for you and your business, if you want to buy them off of Uline or Amazon, that is completely up to you. You can do that. I just don't think you need to waste that extra money on boxes, especially when you're just starting out and when you're at scale. I mean, at this point, I would probably, the average box is probably, I could probably get about $1.89 and I ship out just under 10,000 items a year. So $18,000 gone. <laughs> or I can just go to a dumpster right next to my thrift store every morning and get all the boxes I need. I'm always stocked up in my garage. Next up, are poly millers. I would definitely recommend having a ton of poly millers. This is what this is how I ship all of my shirts. Um, how I ship a lot of my smaller items, including, you know, remote controls and things of that nature. I don't want to advertise to you guys a lot, but if you want to use my link in the description, Gyro Pack, you get 10% off, and then I get a 10% commission on everything you guys buy. You don't have to. Again, I don't want to advertise to you guys a lot, but poly mailers are really awesome. I'll show you guys a couple of, of, of examples of how I use them. Then you're going to need a ton of bubble wrap. Boom. When I need bubble wrap, I type into eBay bubble wrap. <laughs> um, and then I just buy the cheapest listing within the first four listings that pop up. It's usually, I usually get 700 feet. This is 350 feet. I usually get, actually I think that's 700 feet. Yeah. I usually buy 1400 feet at a time and it's usually $70 more or less, dollar or two off. Um, and then as far as packing materials go, you're also going to need tape and a tape gun. I get eBay tape. Having a store, man, that garbage truck. Having a store gives you a coupon to use once a quarter. So I buy all of my tape off of eBay because it's free. Again, you can minimize costs a lot in this business, which is awesome. Let's see if I can get a little bit better lighting in here, sorry. 
You can minimize costs by just getting your tape for free off of eBay using their coupon code. So when you sign up for a store, whether it's $5 a month, $60 a month, or like $300 a month, they give you a certain amount of money toward um, eBay materials. Um, that's easily found on Google and they send you an email every quarter. That's how I get my tape. Other materials are, I use a lot of um, newspaper, again, for free, out of dumpsters. Uh, just adds a little bit of extra protection on top of your um, shipping and things like that. So let me show you how I ship a big item and how I ship a small item. First up, we've got a good old remote control. We're going to put this in three feet of bubble wrap. So there's one foot, they come in 12 by 12 inch squares. We're gonna keep rolling it, two feet, keep rolling it, three feet, okay? Now you can't, you can't even really see the remote because it's got so much bubble wrap on it, good protection. Then you're just gonna simply take a poly miller. You're just gonna shove that remote on in there. Okay, then you're going to wrap it up. You're going to take the plastic off of this poly miller, and then you're just going to seal it off. Okay, then you're good to go. Then you're going to weigh it, make sure that you accurately did it the first time. Wait for that to hit double zeros, triple zeros. Okay, that weighs 4.4 ounces, so what I would do is I would type that into my eBay, five ounces, and then do the measurements real quick. I've just done this enough to know that that's a 13 by four by four, and then you are going to ship it off. Now, I would show you guys a screen record, some of my own sales, but I don't want to um, give away people's names and information and things like that. And then I have a ton of these that I print with my Rolo printer. It's really nice. It just connects straight to eBay. You're able to print it out. And then you would just take this, pretend that there is some information on it, and then just make sure that it is sealed properly and it is ready to go. Then if we were to sell, you know, a DVD, VCR combo player, maybe a VHS, maybe player, maybe a receiver, um, you know, just any of these bigger items, Again, I just get all of my boxes out of dumpsters. You just heavily apply a ton of bubble wrap. You find a box that it fits in, and then you ship it out. Um, you definitely want to cut it down to size. You never want anything shaking or rattling. You want, when you shake a box, you want it, you don't want to hear anything. Then you want to do the ship test. Okay guys, here's the ship test. So we sold a, Bose Wave CD player system. You hear that? It's shaking around in there because I just placed it in there without any protection. Now I have it all nice and packaged up and you can't hear any movement, right? Now this is the ship test. I have many friends that work for UPS and FedEx and USPS, okay? And this is how they handle your packages. Keep in mind, I've got a hundred dollars worth of product in here, right? If you are not willing to do that, do not ship your item because that is how they load the truck. You got a guy right here. They've got a nice little stack. They've got your eight pound package. They chuck it onto the truck. Right behind it, they have a 75 pound package that they throw on top of your package, okay? You need to pack your items accordingly. They need to be very tight and they need to be bubble wrapped and you can use other things like newspaper and things like that to really insulate it, but it needs to be packaged very well or they will break. Next up is putting away and having an inventory system for your items. Now I sell a lot of everything. Again, YouTube, eBay, reselling culture. Apparently that's a, uh, another controversial statement to say that I'm an everything seller. I guess you could call me a multiple hundred category seller, whatever, whatever you guys want to say. I sell a ton of items, but I also sell a ton of like items. I have hundreds of shirts, hundreds of glasses and sunglasses, got hundreds of moats, remotes, dozens of VCR players and receivers and all that good stuff. And so I have a SKU system 
especially for these smaller items. So as you can see, that says G216. Behind that, we got G219. That means that G17 and G218 have both sold. Behind that, we got G228. So the, the uh, quick maths, the nine, the eight in between those two items have sold as well. I buy these off of eBay. You just type in three by nine inch milled plastic bags. You're able to find them. No sponsorship link, nothing like that. Just look it up on eBay. And then what I do is I just put in G for sunglasses and eyeglasses. I have R for remotes. I have C for cameras. I have BC for broken cameras. I have ME for miscellaneous electronics. I have Z for scanners. I have um, B for, sorry, I have S for all my cables. I have um, H for my hand, for my, um, what's it called, for my headphones and things of that nature. Every time I list one of these items, I put them in a bag, and then I write in the custom SKU, which is found at the bottom of item specifics, I just put in the SKU number, and then when it sells, I know exactly where it is. One of the most common mistakes made on eBay is not being able to find your item when it sells and having to cancel the order, resulting in a negative buyer experience because they don't get the item that they ordered. And even though they get a refund, that still sucks, especially when it's used items in varying conditions and varying ability to be found. Some items are harder to come by in a good condition, and when someone buys it on eBay and you can't find it, it's very frustrating, right? So that results in a defect on your account. Get too many of these, eBay can suspend your account, can put you on little vacations, and they can also permanently ban your account and not allow you to sell on eBay which obviously is a thing that you guys don't want to happen. So some people would say that this is a very organized setup for a reseller with 3000 items. Some people would say it is chaos. Other people would say it's organized chaos. I, whatever you guys um, deem my setup is what you can go with. I don't really care, but I know exactly where everything is. The second that something sells, I don't know, maybe it's just my brain or something, but I know exactly where everything is. And if, I, because of my SKU systems and because of my like likeness item setup, I'm able to find everything as it sells. You definitely want to have an inventory system set up to where you can find your items when they sell and ship them out as fast as possible. It's going to result in low defects. I have zero defects and no negative marks on your account. And then the last thing that you guys need to do every day is customer service. You need to send offers, accept offers, reply to returns and cases. Um, I currently have two item not received cases because my post office sucks. They do not scan items into their system. Sometimes they just ship them out so it doesn't have tracking, which is very frustrating for the customer and very frustrating for me as a seller, but it happens. So many times per week, I just have to deal with people saying, hey, where's my item? Or even opening up cases uh, with eBay saying that my items haven't been shipped even though they have been, and then usually two or three days later when they make it to another location, they actually do scan it, and then everything is good to go. So you just have to answer all of those questions, and if you have like items in your store, sometimes people say, hey, can you do combined shipping, things like that. You just want to be on top of all of that. It usually takes anywhere from five to 15 minutes a day in the morning, even at a huge scale. Now, there are still many, many more tips that we can go over to run a successful eBay business. That's why I have my channel, I have many more hours of content, plus there's other YouTube creators that have this content, but this is the beginner's guide. I still want to go over promoted listings with you guys. I want to go over combined shipping policies. I want to go over advanced sourcing methods, all of these things that I'm talking about, I consider intermediate or advanced tips. So if you guys liked this video, please like and subscribe so that way um, I know that you guys want a second video that I can entitle the um, intermediate tips on how to have a successful eBay business in 2024. And then if that video goes as well too, then I can do advanced tips. And if that goes well, I could even do master tips. Who knows? We'll see. But 
I do want to talk about all these other sourcing methods and promoted listings and, and coupons and sell event plus markdown. And there's just a ton of other stuff that we can talk about, about running an eBay business, um, when to list your items, how, you know, all those, all those things too that I, I definitely want to talk about. But this is the beginner's guide. Let me know if you guys would like to see a part two for my intermediate guide. I promise I will never bundle these up as a... Um, course. I'm never going to charge you guys for this information. All of this information is on YouTube already. I hope I was able to just kind of package it in a simpler, more digestible way. Hopefully this was an awesome video for you guys. I'll keep pumping these out and I'm never going to charge you guys for a course. But some people do have quality courses for eBay and for other businesses. And if you want to pay a few dollars or hundreds of dollars or even thousands of dollars to people who know a lot about what you're trying to accomplish, there's it's, I don't think it should be frowned upon to charge for that information or to even pay for that information. So if you would like to seek those out, you can. I'm just never going to do that. And I don't think less of other people who do do that. Okay, love you. Bye. Thanks for watching.